Today on Listen Up, Aftershocks, Japan's response to national disaster tests the limits of the human spirit. Next. Welcome to Listen Up, I'm Lorna Duick. First an earthquake, then a tsunami, followed by one nuclear incident after another. Today, we ask how are the Japanese coping? After the dust has settled and relief efforts have turned to redevelopment, how will they continue to cope? And what is it that causes some people to break while others triumph in the midst of trauma? Today, we'll explore those questions from our Christian faith perspective as we learn more about Japan, and revisit previous tragedies with those who survived them. We begin at Pearson International Airport with the voices of people fleeing Japan's devastation. I was on a train and um, it, uh, I, I guess a six hit Yamagata and we were rocking uncontrollably and I thought we were gonna tip over. And I was trapped for six hours. It was pretty bad. I didn't think it was as bad as they said it was because I guess we got didn't get like the full magnitude, but it was, Definitely the craziest experience of my life. Other well, people were responding in various ways, in their own individual ways, but outwardly, appearance-wise, they look to be mm, somewhat calm and dealing with it. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it's quite, it was quite an ordeal. Clearly those people are feeling relief at being on Canadian soil and joining me now to find out how the people who must remain behind are coping is the Consul General of Japan, Tetsuo Yamashita. Mr. Consul General, thank you so much for being with Listen Up. Thank Tell you for... Tell us how your Japanese people are coping. I'm so proud of them. They're behaving with discipline, dignity and helping with each other. They have lost everything, their home, their friends family, their boat, everything, but they're behaving so resiliently. I'm so proud of them. You have a word in the Japanese language, gaman, which is the art of endurance. Where does that come from, that art? I think it's the humanity. It's uh, just uh, there's a calamity of massive biblical apocalyptic signs brought out the best in them. But at the same time, I'm a little bit worried about post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, I think we've all watched the uh, scientists at the nuclear plants. Where does that kind of selfless behavior, the people who are standing guard, come from? Well, if you live in Toronto, you are reminded of the Sergeant Ryan Russell, who stood up for our safety and fell. We are so proud of Canadian men and women in Afghanistan. I think it's the same thing. They just uh, stand up to protect our safety, and it's their duty, and we are so proud of them and we're thankful to them. There has been talk, the World Bank says it'll be at least five years till your country can rebuild, but there has been talk that your historic experience with World War II is going to be part of what shapes the future. Tell us about that. Is it, are you going to be relying on the lessons of history? Well, I think I, uh, I'm very proud of the evacuees who have a high hope. One of them said, this may be a devastation for the first time after the World War II, but there are two distinctive differences. One is we have not been defeated. We have not surrendered. And this time, the world is with us. Okay, and what about religion? I know you're a secular country, but yet Shintoism, Buddhism, and even Christianity are strong in your country. How will faith affect people? Well, as a government official, including myself, uh, the Constitution prohibits the involvement of state in religion. But um, at the same time, uh, the religion is quite strong at the time of trouble like this. I think uh, we go to Shinto shrine, we go to Buddhist temple, and we go to Christian church uh, for the salvation of the soul. Sir, your own view that you articulated to Ontario's Lieutenant Governor was that God's mercy and grace was stronger, higher, deeper than this tremor. What convinces you that is true? This is what uh, Dr. Gary Beasley, the senior pastor, Evangel Temple in Toronto gave me. He called me on the day and uh, he sent me a very nice 
mail as well, saying that each land and culture is a wonderful and unique gift from God. And Pastor Gary continues to say that their hearts go out to the nation of Japan at this most difficult time and that they will be fervently praying for God, mercy, and love to be released among these precious people. And on that day, he wrote in the social media, may God's mercy and grace in the devastated areas be stronger, deeper, and higher than the shaking and the water that hit Japan. I'm deeply thankful for giving this powerful message and I was so deeply emotionally moved when their honors, Lieutenant Governor and Mrs. David only immediately agreed with this statement. Isn't that beautiful that Canada's faith community can support Japan at this time? And you called for a magnitude nine movement of compassion. What would that look like? That is from the evacuees themselves. Okay, the tsunami hit us. Let's give them back a 9.0 magnitude love and courage. I am very much encouraged. And the preparedness. Just give us an idea how prepared your country was. It was the gold standard, the gold ribbon for what happens. I'm sure it was. Uh, the same area was hit by tsunami in 1896 and again in 1933 and again in 1960 when a tsunami hit Japan, far away from Chile. But again and again they came back, and I'm sure it will come back again. Mind you, their preparedness was outstanding, and the final tally is yet to come, and I'm sure it will be beyond belief. But also, compared to the size of the three seismic tectonic moves that hit us, the number would be far below what it could have been. Mr. Yamashita, Council General of Japan, thank you very much for being with Listen Up. Thank you for having me, Lona. All right. When we return, we ask a trauma recovery expert we met in Hurricane Katrina, what makes some break when others triumph? That's next. This was the living room right here in, in a carport. I think about our lives of stuff we had, and it's just all gone.